It's one of the most commonly discussed things in the natural health world, and that's, is this particular product or treatment safe when I'm pregnant? I think that requires a shift in our mindset because my generation, okay, so I'm 29, my generation has been raised with the mindset that allopathic and Western medicine are the best thing. They're the, the normal thing and anything outside of that is an alternative. When really, if you look at history, Western and allopathic medicine are the alternatives. Natural medicine and natural options were around for hundreds of years before anyone made and patented the first drug or created the first like institutionalized white coat office, okay? So that's kind of where I'm approaching this from. That's my personal mindset is natural is the original thing, the God-given gifts that I believe we have. And then there are cases where we do need intervention from the allopathic or Western medicine world. And I'm not saying that those are evil uh, by any turn. There are wonderful things that they are capable of doing, such as surgeries that save lives and things like that. But I think it is very heavily relied on and overly so. Um, but that's, that's my opinion. That's my approach. So I just wanted to kind of give you a basis for where I'm coming from as we approach this topic. I also want to say I'm not a doctor. I'm not a midwife. I'm not a doula. I have no certifications or letters behind my name. I'm a mom, wife, and woman who is passionate about empowering myself in my health and wellness and also in turn my family and friends and anyone I meet. So nothing that I say is prescribed medical advice. I'm not diagnosing anything or attempting to treat anything. I am going to share the decisions I made and the things I used when I was pregnant and then let you make decisions for yourself from there. So if we are clear on that, let's move forward. People are so nervous to make decisions when they're pregnant and other people, when, when you are the pregnant woman, other people are so quick to tell you their horror stories or tell you what you should and shouldn't do. And every blog post you read and every Facebook opinion that is thrown at you is going to be different. Like, it's just, it's so much fun to navigate all that when your hormones are like not what they normally are and you're growing another little person and then everybody and their brother-in-law has something to tell you. And I know they do it out of a heart of love and concern. Um, but I remember there being times when I was pregnant that I just, if I had to listen to one more opinion, I was just going to lose it. Like it's a tough time to navigate with others sometimes. And you wish you could just kind of draw up into a ball and not hear one more opinion. So if you don't want to hear my opinion, you're welcome to stop this podcast right here. Skip over it. Come back to it another day. Don't come back to it at all. Totally your decision and your prerogative. If you hear my dog going insane in the background, our neighbors are working on a playset in their backyard, but we can see it from our front window and there is nothing I can do to keep this dog quiet today. So I apologize if you hear him in the background. But anyway, my story and some of the choices I made in pregnancy. So I feel like to share my pregnancy story with you and things I chose to use while I was pregnant, I need to back up and give you just a short synopsis of my fertility journey. So my husband and I took over a year to get pregnant, which was somewhat concerning, especially considering um, the age bracket we were in and that that should be like typical fertile years. So uh, went to a white coat to get some advice, see what would be recommended was told that my choosing to use natural options uh, was basically going to kill me and I was made to feel really foolish and instead of walking out there 
out of there with a sense of this person cares about me and wants to work with me and listen to me. Um, I walked out very, very irritated and determined to find a different way than the options that were being shoved at me. And, and I choose those words on purpose. I really did feel um, like that particular coat was not listening and was just shoving her opinions on me and not allowing there to be a, a discourse between us. So I chose not to go back and I reached out to some friends I knew that are in the natural world and I just, I explained what happened and I explained that we were wanting to get pregnant and um, just asked, is there anything, a resource you know of that I should look to um, or a book I should buy or something like that? And they pointed me to a particular protocol and said, um, try this. And so I looked it up and I had a lot of the natural products that I needed on hand to um, go through that protocol. And so I immediately chose to try that because I already had most of what I needed. Um, so it wasn't going to really cost me anything more. The only thing it was going to cost me was the time to try it. And I figured it wasn't going to hurt if I could skip surgeries and other um, tests and treatments and things that the white coat had been shoving at me. Um, so I chose to go this route and within a month I had a positive pregnancy test. So that's a very short synopsis of um, my fertility journey, which is a whole entire different story. And I have done um, videos and posts and things about that in my other social media platforms. So if you're interested in those, you can find them or ask me for the link to them. Um, when it came to me actually being pregnant, there were a lot of things that um, mattered to me that I didn't want to do and other things that I did want to do. And so I went in search of a practitioner that was going to allow me the freedom to make my own decisions and not push back because I, I refused to go to someone and pay them <laughs> to basically like supervise and help me if they were just going to fight me the entire nine months. So I found a midwife who was out of state, but not extremely far away and knew a girl in college who had worked for this midwife. Um, the girl I knew was a midwife and she had worked in this birthing center with this midwife before, um, but had moved away. So I wasn't able to use her when I was pregnant, but I did um, get introduced to this birthing center and midwife by her. Um, so went there and in our basically introductory meeting appointment was very upfront with her and said, I, I do not um, want to do a glucose test because I already choose not to consume sugar and I don't want to pour those food dyes and excessive amounts of sugar into my body, especially when I'm growing another person. And um, also chose not to get a particular jab that is recommended um, for many women who have a negative blood type, as I do, um, because that was a concern since my husband has a positive blood type. And as, as much as um, she advised me to get that, I did my own research and I came to the decision that that was not something I wanted to do. Uh, but she honored me in that. And that was something that was very, very important to me. And I'm not even trying to get into that subject. I'm just explaining to you um, some of the decisions I made. So I really think it's important that you do your own research um, for your health all the time. Like no matter what aspect of health you're dealing with, I really believe that it's important for you to do that research and read the things on your own. Um, but especially when you are pregnant because you're affecting not only yourself, but another person. And um, I really appreciated the freedom that my midwife gave me to make those decisions. But some of the other things um, that I did when I was pregnant is I used a lot of essential oils to support 
my body and proper functions um, through my pregnancy. And the only two oils that I personally chose to avoid while I was pregnant were fennel and clary sage. Um, fennel, I, I read so many conflicting things, even just in the company that I'm in, um, about how that affects pregnancy and whether or not it was safe. Um, I was very confused and science is not my first love or strong point. <laughs> in, it wasn't in school. I have since become a lot more comfortable with it. Um, but the things I was reading definitely were not clicking for me. And I have a friend who is a pharmacist, but also um, in the same oil company that I am. And I reached out to him and explained that I was pregnant and you know, I'm reading this, but I'm also reading this and some say yes and some say no. And I, I just asked him, what, what is the deal with it? Like, why, first of all, why are they saying that you shouldn't while you're pregnant? Because I, I was never getting a clear understanding of that from anything I was reading. And then, um, you know, what, what could it do? What might it do? You know, whatever. And so he very graciously answered my question and, um, some people believe that because fennel can have an effect on lactation, that it could um, basically mess with your body and on a you know rare occasion may cause premature labor type such you know concerns because of if your body's lactating, then usually you're not um, carrying a child. So there were, there were some interesting concerns there. And so I just, with that one, since I was not 100% confident in what it may or may not do, I just chose to not use it. It wasn't something I used on a daily basis before I got pregnant. And it wasn't something um, that I had purchased or anything. I think I had gotten a bottle of it for free through our rewards program at one point. But um it wasn't like I was removing something from my routine. So I felt confident in just not using that one until after my son was born. The uh, With Clary Sage, the other one that I chose not to use, um, that was because I knew that many women in the essential oil world um, use that as a way to promote and encourage proper progression in labor. And I did not want to do that <laughs> while I was pregnant and the baby needed to stay inside. Um, I did choose to use it during labor and personally the results I saw were very positive in that. It helped me um, to just keep everything progressing the way that it should and um, I had had some instances before I really knew I was in labor where it would seem like I was in labor and things would fizzle out after a couple hours and um, the day that I realized I was truly and for sure in labor and this thing was happening, um, then I started applying that to my ankles, which is the um, Vitaflex point for the uterus. So I used that. Um, I also chose to use it in some other ways that I won't mention because I would probably get in trouble walk in that line of diagnosing and treating things. And, and I don't want to do that. If you're curious, I'm more than happy to answer your questions in personal messages. I love getting to have those discussions with people. Um, but in this public platform, I don't think it would be wise for me to, uh, say too much there. I also chose to take a lot of natural supplements, um, from my company I, I did not one time take a supplement off of a store shelf because I do not trust the ingredients in those and lots of investigative studies and things have been done on those types of products and have proved that uh, the benefits they say they have don't happen and the ingredients they claim to contain actually aren't there or if they are there it's very very minimal amounts and does not match their labeling. Um, so I just felt like the wisest thing for me to do would be get it from the company that I already trusted 
and um, I had already seen results in my health otherwise, not around fertility or my pregnancy. Um, but I already knew and trusted and loved those products, so that's what I chose to use. Um, there was a point where my midwife had recommended another brand, and I said, no, thank you. And um, I needed some vitamin D. At the time, my company did not have a vitamin D supplement, but it was in some of our other supplements. So I, I chose to use the ones that contained it to increase my levels um, and get them to where she wanted them. So again, she was very flexible with me and I used what I knew and what I was comfortable with because being empowered and being confident in what I was using was one of the most important things to me while I was pregnant. Um, so supplements, I also, before we got pregnant, um, ditched every chemical out of my house because I learned about how that affected our bodies and our hormones. And obviously our hormones are very key to, um, getting pregnant and sustaining a, po a positive pregnancy, like a full-term pregnancy, um, and carrying that baby to term and having a safe delivery. I chose to, you know, clean up my personal care and my makeup and all of those things as I learned how each one affected my body and then in turn would affect a pregnancy. I had already made those changes, but they were ones that I continued to, um, to use and abide by as I went. But one of my favorite things is the cleaner from my company, knowing that um, it could come in contact with my skin, I could breathe it in and it wasn't going to do any type of organ damage, brain damage, um, hormonal damage to me or my baby was extremely comforting. That peace of mind is, is so worth um, the time to learn these things and the money that we put into purchasing these products. And I know um, when you're looking at a budget when you're pregnant, and in our case, um, we paid out of pocket to see the midwife that we did because our insurance didn't cover it. But that again was just something that was so important to me. We were willing to do that and my husband fully supported me in that. And I'm very, very thankful um, for how he stands behind the things that I believe are important in our health and wellness. And so there's so many expenses when you're pregnant and then have a tiny one. I know sometimes the mindset is I just can't, like I have to buy diapers, I have to buy a car seat, I have to buy a stroller, I have to have a crib, I have to, you know, all these things that we need for the baby that sometimes taking care of the parents gets overlooked or taking care of our health gets overlooked. And it was something that I had to learn to make a priority in even before I was pregnant and, you know, making sure that I had the products I needed to be healthy. And, um, if you've, if you've heard my story in any of my other episodes or posts, um, I was very sick even before we attempted to get pregnant. Um, I dealt with a lot of different health issues. It was sick in bed for days at a time, the first year of our marriage. And, um, it was then that I really had to learn to be willing to invest in my health and look at it as an investment and not just an expense. And so carrying that mindset into the pregnancy and being willing to continue to invest in the natural products. I know a lot of people think, oh, natural products are so expensive. Actually, with my company, if you break down a, a bottle of our cleaning concentrate, it should make you about 29 bottles, which breaks it down to less than a dollar per bottle of cleaner. And that's about a 16 ounce bottle, which will last um quite a while. I've had a bottle of our concentrate last about a year. Depends on how often I'm cleaning and how much I'm cleaning. And with a dog and a kid, sometimes <laughs> it goes faster depending on the mess I'm cleaning up or often, you know, we have to clean toys and that sort of thing. But, um, generally speaking, it lasts quite a long time and it costs less than a dollar bottle. Like you can't find good product for that cheap. So even just, um, Keeping that mindset for me was important during pregnancy and knowing that I had that safe product was amazing. So I hope that this kind of made sense. Um, this didn't quite go the way I was thinking it would go, but 
I didn't want to script it out either. I, I prefer to do these kind of from the heart as we go. So I hope that's helpful for each of you. If you know someone who's pregnant, please share this with them. If you are um, pregnant and have questions, please ask me. If you are in the stage of life where you are trying to conceive, I would love to talk to you too if you have um, any questions or if there's any way I can encourage you. Just let me know. <laughs> but I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I will be back again next Friday morning with another episode.